a second of my uh, videos on the carnival dice game uh, where I have uh, three separate dice. I call them a red, green, and blue dice. Um, and each one, each die has three numbers on it. And the game really is that I will roll two of the dice, and the winner is the is the one uh, uh, of the dice that has the largest number. So first, I want to look at uh, the uh, the review, if you like, the technique that I use for generating the the ran the three random numbers that appear on the face of the dice. Okay, now, so to begin with. I use the RAND function, as you see right over here, RAND. RAND generates a, uh, a, a random variable that's uniformly distributed, a number that's uniformly distributed between 0 and 1. Now, I want to have the ability to generate three completely different random numbers with equal probability. So what I do is I take 3 times RAND, that produces a random number uniformly distributed between 0 and 3. And then I take the integer part of that number. So it, uh, it just gives me, uh, on that uniformly distributed 0, 3 number, it just tells me uh, what, the, uh, uh, what the units digit is that's to the left of the decimal point. So I have three choices on that digit. I can either get a 0. If, if the random variable, if the random number was between 0 and 1, then the integer part of that is 0. If the random variable is between 1 and 2, the integer part of that is 1. And if the random variable is between 1, um, I'm sorry, if the random variable is between, yeah, 1 and 2. And then if the random variable is between 2 and 3, the integer part of that is 2. So if this is working the way I want it to work, I should be able to generate either 0, 1, or 2 with equal probability. Then over here in this column, what I'm doing is I'm taking the 0, 1, of 2, and I'm converting it into the numbers that I put on the face of the dice. I put I want to have a 1, 5, and 9 uh, represented on the face of the dice. So if I get a 0, I want to produce a 1. If I get a 1, I want to produce a 5. And over here, if I get a 2, I want to produce a 9. So all I'm doing is converting 0, 1, and 2 into 1, 5, and 9. So this would represent a random roll of my red dice that has these three numbers. And I did that using a, a, a uh, concatenated if statement, where I have an if statement inside an if statement. Okay, I did that in video 1. I'm not going to go over that again. Then I do the same thing for the blue die. I generate uh, a different set of 0, 1, and 2 random numbers down here. And then I use concatenated if statements. You, you can see if I click on this right here, I get this con concatenated if statement that generates the three numbers that I want on the face of the blue die, which are 2, 6, and 7. So that a 0 should give me a 2. Um, a 1 should give me a 6, and a 2 should give me a 7, and that seems to work. Then I do the same thing for the green die. Now what I want to do is that if I want to look at uh, the game. In other words, if one person rolls a red die and one person rolls a blue die, uh, who's going to win uh, in this case? So if the red rolls a 5 and the blue rolls a 7, the 7 is higher than the 5, so blue wins. Red rolls a 9, blue rolls a 2. The red is higher than the 2, so red wins. So I use a simple if statement again here. I look at the numbers in the red column and the blue column one right across from each other, and I use an if statement to tell me which one is bigger. And then, depending on which one is bigger, the if statement actually prints out the word red or the word blue. Okay, so in this case right in here, 5, 7, blue wins, it prints out blue. Uh, 9, 6, red wins, it prints out red. So that's how this works, and this is the statement in, uh, uh, in the text which uh, then uh, prints out red or blue the winner. 
Then I do red versus green. That's what I have here. And then I have blue versus green. That's what I do there. Now, before I uh, do some more with that, let me look at another uh, set of columns that I've done on the spreadsheet. Okay, this right over here. Now, what I'm doing right here is I'm looking at uh, all the possible outcomes of, let's say, red versus green, and then red versus blue, and then blue versus green over here off the end of the page. So my red dice can either be a 1, a 5, or a 9. So I write down 1 three times. And then for each of these 1s, the green dice can be a 3 or a 4 or an 8. So one possibility is red 1, green 3. Another is red 1, green 4. Another one is red 1, green 8. Then I put down three fives because five is the second number that I can generate on the red dice. And I can have a five and a three green, a five and a green four, a five and a green eight, and so on. So this set of nine combinations here represent all possible combinations between rolling the red dice and rolling the green dice. Okay, then, um, um, then I just count up how many times green appears or red appears here, and I can say red wins, okay? Then over here, I do it with red and blue. Look at all possible combinations of the red dice and the blue dice, and I get blue wins if it's red, blue. That's on average. The blue will win more often than red will win. Over here, on average, red will win more often than green wins, and then over here, when I do blue versus green, I look at all the possible blue combinations, all the possible green combinations, and I say, look at all, who wins in those cases, and I get uh, the green wins. So actually, this is pretty interesting. If you notice, what we have here is that um, uh, red versus green, red always wins. Um, right here, red versus green, uh, red versus blue, blue always wins. So red beats green and then blue beats red. So you would think that blue beats wins more often than anybody. But it turns out that when you do red versus uh, or blue versus green, that green wins. So this is a little bit counterintuitive. I hope you see that because Red beats green, blue beats red, but that would tell you if uh, if blue beats red and red beats green, then blue must surely beat green, but it doesn't. Green wins on that contest right in here. Oh boy, how can that happen? Now what I want to do is I ask the question, oh, I just counted these up. I just went through and just counted the reds and blues. I didn't do any Excel function operation to figure out that red wins here or the blue uh, wins here. But I, um, and, and I, I figured, well, you know, there's got to be a way for me to count up the number of times in this column right here, the number of times that green appears or the number of times that R appears. So I want to look at which columns contain G and how many of them and how many contain R. So I looked this up, Googled it. And um, I came up with exactly the answer that I was looking for right here. It said, uh, I want to use, if I want to um, figure out um, how many, time, how many uh, times that one letter R appears in a column of R's and B's, this is the formula I use. Okay, so what this is doing, though, is uh, it's actually pretty clever. So let's look at this here. I'm using this uh, Excel function called sum product, and I'm using the Excel function called length. And then over here, I'm using the Excel function called substitute. So uh, this is the range of cells over which I'm looking. And the example range that they show here is B3 to B7. 
and uh, I'm looking at the length of all of the characters in this entire range, okay? So since I only have one character per cell, this is then, then just really going to be the total number of cells. Um, then what I do is I substitute, in this, the example here, they say we substitute every time a lowercase zero appears, we substitute nothing. This is nothing whatsoever. This is just deleting all the lowercase zeros from all of the characters in the range B3 to B7. And um, then what, by taking, so this gets the total number of characters minus the number of times little zero appears. This is the total number of characters. So the difference between the two is the total number of times that little zero appears. So let's see how we can apply that in our example here. Okay. And again, I've, I've, I've just written it down here. I'm looking at now, looking at this column here, which is the M column right along here. And let's say what I want to do is count the number of times that G appears in all these cells from here down to here. Okay. So uh, using that formula that I just found, this is the formula. Some product uh, of the length of all of the character strings. And each character string is just, uh, just one character, so a big deal. Of all the character strings between M2 and M10, this is M2 right here, this is M10. Um, so that counts the total number of characters that appear in this range of cells here. Then I do is I'm going to substitute every time a G appears, substitute it uh, with uh, nothing. Okay, I'm actually by putting a uh, parentheses, comma, parentheses here right next to it. I'm sorry, parentheses, parentheses right next to each other. All I'm doing is actually removing the character G when it appears. So I remove all the char all the, so I look at the length the total number of characters in the cells when the letter G has been removed. Okay, and so the difference between before the letter G and after the letter G tells me exactly the number of times that the character G appears in this length of uh, cells right in that range. So that's what this thing does. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is... Uh, uh, now I'm going to try to to uh, write a uh, uh, a little bit of a format here that makes it a bit self-explanatory. So I don't want to do this calculation right in here. Let's say I want to put the number here, and then right here. So I, I'm going to copy this. So I click on this, and then I copy, and then right here I paste. So that puts the four there. And now what I want to type here is uh, green wins or uh, number of green wins or something of that sort. And so let's see if I can fit it into this one cell here. So I click on that and I'll say number of, it won't fit in there. So what am I going to do about that? Let me concatenate these two cells right in here. So I double click those two cells. I go to Format, Cells, uh, Alignment, Merge. Now, I find the only reason why I know to do this is because I've done it before. I, I find where the merge cells written, it's not absolutely clear that you would put it under alignment, right? Uh, you know, it's obvious sort of after the fact, but you wouldn't know to look there, I think, ahead of time. So then I do this. So now I want to now put in here number of green wins. Okay, so I have that here. And uh, I can format that perhaps a little bit better. I click on this, and then I click on this 
and then that moves it over to the right hand side of the cell. So number of greens wins is four. <clears throat> now let me do something similar, number of red wins. So, so that way I don't have to count how many here and subtract to figure out how many red wins. So let me merge these two cells now because I'll know uh, I'll need that length. Format cells. Oh, alignment's already clicked here. Alignment, merge cells, okay. Now I can click on this and this. Now I'll click here and I'll do a number of red wins. There. So there's a number of red wins, number of green wins. Um, now I may want to make this green and make this red just to make it even more obvious what's going on. So I can click there. Now I don't know if I actually need to highlight it like that or not. But then I can go here and I can pick, I want to pick green, so let me pick that there. Number of green wins. Then down here, uh, let's, uh, let me not highlight it and see if it works. Then I want to put number of red wins and I do that and see it. I have to highlight it. It doesn't work. So there are number of red wins. Highlight it. There are number of red wins. And I might even want to make this uh, green and red. So click on that. Don't quite have them all. There. Now I want to make that green. And it's not showing up there. Okay, so maybe I don't have that choice. I'll come think about I'll come back and think about that perhaps a little bit later. Okay. So hit escape, get out of there. Number of red wins. So I want to put in the statement for number of red wins. I want that to be just like my statement for number of green wins except whenever I have a G, I want to replace the G by an R. So let me pull this up again. Let me copy this whole thing. Copy. Let me down here. Uh, oh, I don't want to do that. Escape. Uh, there, click on that. I, I make that mistake all the time, by the way. Um, now, uh, what I want to do is copy in here what that statement is. But, I, I, but with this, as it stands, it's just a number of green wins. So I want to, where G appears here, I want to substitute uh, R, uppercase R, hit return. So there I have um, number of red wins is five, number of green wins. Now, I, I was trying to make this, uh, this particular character four and this character five to be green and red, respectively. And uh, let me try this. Uh, keep that four go up here and make that green there. And now let me highlight this and make that red there. Okay, so there I have number of red wins. Okay, so that's a interesting um, operation for counting the number of G's and counting the number of reds here. Now. Over here, I want to do something similar, except I want to have number of uh, blue wins and number of red wins. So uh, how about right on top here, and then I merge these two cells. Okay, so I merge these two cells right here, and um, format cells, alignment, merge cells, okay. Do the same thing with these two cells, uh, format cells, uh, merge cells, okay. Okay, now, so this I'll put as, I'll make it number of green wins. No, I'm doing red and blue, sorry. I'll put number of blue wins. Number of blue wins, there. Now, uh, I want to move those over to the right, just like that. And then I want to make those colors blue, so I use this. So there are a number of blue wins. Here, I'll move them all the way over to the right, like that. Now here, I want to do number of red wins. 
N-U-M-B-E-R of red winds. I never could spell. You know, spelling is genetic, that you're, you're actually born being able to spell well or not being able to spell well. It might have to do with how you can discriminate sounds, because I um, often have tr trouble uh, spelling with words that may have prefixes or suffixes that sound almost the same. Uh, and uh, that is, and it's, uh, so for example, um, I can't hear the difference between something that might end in an ED or an AD or an or ANG versus ING. And because of that, I have a hard time spelling the words. Okay, number of red winds. Okay, now with this, I want to do that, that number of red winds, and I want to color it red. So there, I've got that. Now, what do I put here? What I want to put here is a statement just like I put over here on these two. And in particular, uh, a number of blue winds, let's say I want it to be just like this, except I want to substitute a B in for the G that appears. So let me copy that whole thing. There, copy. Let me put it here. Copy, return. Now over here, I'll put it here. And, and uh, copy. And then I'll substitute for the G, put in a boot, big boot, a capital uppercase B for blue, hit return. Gives me the number of blue wins. Well, that isn't right, zero. So what's going wrong with this? Uh, there, right, there has to be something going wrong because it's not counting up the number of zeros. So I look back up here, and it's the range of the cells that isn't right. So instead of M, I want to be looking at column P. So I want to replace that M with a P, this M with a P, and this M with a P. Now there and this M with a P. Now let's try that. So five, there's a number of five, one, two, three, four, five, looks like five. And then the number of red wins should be just like this, except with a B replaced by an R. So let me go back up here, copy, and come back down here. I put, uh, put that up right up here. And now I want to replace the B by an R. There, return. So, so here I have, now I wanted these to have color. So I wanted this to be blue. So I click on that, go over here, hit blue, click on this, go over here, hit red there. Now, I have one more to do here, and that's the blue versus green. So, blue versus green. Okay, again, let me merge these cells. Format. Cells. Merge cells. Okay. Here. Format, cells, merge cells. Okay. So again, I want this to be number of blue wins. Copy. I'll put that in there. Copy. Let's see, can I change? I'll just type it. I don't know why it doesn't like it. Number of blue wins there. Now I want to move that to the right and I want to change it to blue. There's blue. I want to do this to be number of green wins right in here. Number of 
green winds, and I want that there, there, and I want the color to be green. Okay, number of green winds. Now I want to put the formula in here. And, um, okay, so the formula, again, number of blue winds, number of green winds. Let me just um, copy that formula over here, this one. Right here, this one. Okay. Copy. Now, remember, I have to change the cell range. I want to go from S2 and not P2. S2, S, 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 hit return. The number of blue winds is three. There are only three blue winds out of all possible combinations of blue and green. The number of green winds will be just like the number of blue winds. Except I replaced B by G. Hit return. Six. Okay, I want to make this blue, so go to there, hit blue, make this green, go to here, hit that green. So there we go. So we've used an Excel formula to count up the number of R's and G's in this column and display them down here. Number of B's and R's in this column, display them down here, and, and then similar over here. So notice that what we have is that now there, this is not a probability thing here. Here I'm just looking at all possible combinations of red and green and seeing which one wins more often. So on average red is going to win uh, five to four. Here on average blue is going to beat red five to four. So you would might think that because blue beats red and red beats green that blue is going to beat green. But but these kinds of calculations don't have that property. And it's sort of like saying uh, blue is greater than red, red is greater than green, therefore blue is greater than green. Well, this doesn't satisfy that property. Um, I guess that would be called transitivity or, uh, or well ordering or something of that sort. Because what we have over here, when we look at green versus blue, we have that in fact on average, if you had green versus blue, that green wins most of the time. So if you were going to play a game uh, where you knew that on average you would always win, that's say that's why it's called carnival dice, what you might say is you tell a person, pick any one of these three dice. You can pick any one you want. So if they pick green, then you pick the red one, and then you play them, you know, 10 or 20 rolls of the dice for money, and you would get that, and you would expect to win. If they pick the blue dice, then you want to pick the green dice because green always beats blue. If they pick the green dice, um, you want to pick red. So they pick green, you pick red. If they pick blue, you pick green. And if they pick uh, red, you would then um, pick blue. So you can always, you can seem like you're being very generous, letting them pick whatever dice they want to play with, and then you pick the one that you know is always going to beat that dice on average. So carnival dice, you know, the kind of game you might find at a carnival uh, or for that matter, let's say in a casino, Vegas, where the house always has the advantage and will always win, even though in, to a superficial observation, it appears that you would have the advantage being able to pick whichever dice you want to pick. 
Okay, so that explains that. Now, I've got more to explain over here, uh, but I will do that in uh, part three, where I want to do something very similar to uh, decide to count the number of blue and reds here, the number of green and reds here, okay, and then the number of green and blues here, because what we're doing here is we're actually doing a random experiment where we're rolling the three dice, getting a random result out of it, and then looking to see who wins. So we want to compare these random results with these calculations over here that tell us exactly what should happen with those random results. Okay, so that's it for, the, for part two.